keeper. You've been our protector. You've been a friend. Father, we bless your name. Thank you for all that you've done and all that you're going to do. And God, we exalt and magnify your name and give you glory in Jesus' name we pray. Let every heart say, amen. You can take your seats. Amen. How many excited about being in the presence of the Lord on this morning? Amen. That was about a couple of hands, but how many excited about being in the presence of the Lord this morning? Amen. Everybody should have been clapping. Everybody should have been screaming. Everybody should have been shouting. Because it could have been another way. I said again, it could have been another way. Never take it for granted that you just are supposed to be here. It's by the mercy and the grace of God that we made it. He was our spiritual alarm clock this morning that shook us. Amen. It wasn't the one that was sitting by your bed. It was God who was our spiritual alarm clock and allowed us to be here because your alarm clock could have won off. And you slept on to glory, but God shook us. Amen. He allowed us to be here this morning. And listen, not only did he allow us to be here this morning, but he allowed you to know that you're here. Ah, uh, because somebody woke up this morning, didn't have the mind to know where they were, didn't have the mind to know that they were still in earth. Somebody say, but God. But God gave you the mind that you know where you are. God gave you the mind that you was able to clothe yourselves. God gave you the mind that you was able to drive in the right direction. Somebody started out this morning heading in one direction and ended up in a place that they didn't even know where they were. But God, amen, we got to learn to magnify God because God is just God all by himself. We got to learn to praise God because God is God. Ain't nobody God but God. Ain't nobody bigger than God. Ain't nobody better than God. Can't nobody do what God can do. Nobody is more awesome to God. Nobody is more educated than God. God is God all by himself. The Bible says that God is the creator of all things. Hallelujah. You can take your seat because I feel right happy right about now. Hallelujah. You can take your seats. You can take your seats. You can take your seats. But I promise, I promise, I promise, I promise if we will learn to change our posture about how we worship God, if we will learn to change our posture about how we worship God, what you thought you was waiting on from God, God is waiting on you to put yourself in the right posture. And when you get in the right posture, God says, I'm going to open the floodgates of heaven. And he says, I'm going to cause blessings to shower down on you once you get in the right posture. Hallelujah. Take your seat just for a moment. I promise I promise I ain't going to be long because I'm getting too happy. I promise, I promise I ain't going to be long because I'm getting, I'm getting too happy. Oh, Lord. I, I know I heard somebody say, I feel, I feel clapping in my hand and I feel stomping in my feet. I hear somebody say, if you, if you, if you, if you don't watch out, I'm going to start to speak in unknown tongues as the Spirit give utterance. Somebody say, Look at your neighbor and say, listen, hold my mule. Oh, Lord. The, atmos the atmosphere is feeling, about, is feeling about right. The temperature is, is right about where it should be. But I want you to know that God wants to do something in our lives if we would learn to, to just position ourselves in the right place. 
posture. See, generally, we're not waiting on God. We're waiting to put our posture ourselves in the right position, and God is going to shake some things loose if we get in the right, right position. Take, take your seat. I heard somebody say, Elder Walker, you only got about five or ten minutes, so take your seat. Take your seat. Take your seats. Take your seats. Amen. Take your seats. Take your seats. I feel the spirit of the Lord in this place. So I do honor God in this place on this morning, the spirit of Christ. Honor my leaders, pastors called and Pastor Regina. Listen, listen. When we honor them, I want you to know that we need to act crazy for the leadership that God has given us. <laughs> see, 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 what you got to understand is that you have to bless God for your leaders while they're here. And we, got, we must never take anything for granted, anything for granted, anything for granted, anything for granted. That's why we are to honor each other as well, because we never know how things are going to happen between us leaving and meeting each other again. We take it for granted we're going to see each other again. But we got to learn to treat right, be right, do right, amen, while we're interacting among each other. We should never be upset and leaving all mad and jacked up when we can open our mouths and get things right while we're here because love speaks. I said again, love speaks. Love don't get silent. I don't care how mad you get, love speaks. And if you love me, you're going to talk to me. You're not going to shut up and stop talking to me and talk about me. But if you love me, you're going to talk to me. That's Bible. You don't get quiet because somebody said something that you don't like. But if you love me. The Bible said, God said, you can't even talk to me unless you get it right with your brother. Don't even try to pray and talk to God because if you love me, you'll talk to me. God said, don't even leave your gifts on the altar unless you get it right with your brother. If you can't get it right with your brother, if you can't get it right with your spouse, if you can't get it right with your children, listen, don't even come to the altar. God says, I'm not going to move on your behalf and Unless you get it right with your brothers, your sisters, your family. God said, don't even talk to me. See, 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 I, I ain't got to my message yet, but hold on. I'm going to get there uh, in about another five minutes here. But God said, don't even try to talk to me if you got mess in your heart. Don't even try to talk to me. You can't even work for God with mess in your heart. God is not going to sit his oil on foolishness. He's not going to sit his anointing on crap. He's not going to sit his anointing on trash. When you stop getting it right with your brothers and sisters, you begin to operate in self. Because if you can't get it right with them, you can't operate. You can't even work for God. You can work in self, but you can't work for God until you... You get it right. That's why people keep messing up in the church because they got darkness in their heart and they refuse to get it right with the brothers and sisters. Listen, God knows what he desires for you, but you'll never receive it unless you get things right with your wife, your children, your brothers, your sisters. I don't care how much anointing you say you have on your life. If you don't get it right, God going to take a back seat to everything you do. But oh my God, when you decide that you're going to get things right with your family, God says, listen, I'm going to cause a supernatural explosion to take place in your life. Yeah. 
Because listen, listen, listen. When you don't get it right with your family, your spiritual family, your spiritual, uh, your physical family, God says you operate in self. That means you're operating head and shoulders just like Saul. You're trying to do things by yourself with no acknowledgement, no acknowledgement of God when you refuse to get things right. You're saying that I place myself on the throne. I know more than God. I'm wiser than God. I'm stronger than God. I'm better than God when you don't get things right. Listen, listen, listen. If y'all push me this morning, I promise I'm going to preach. But listen, we got to stop playing church and just be right. We got to stop playing church and just do right. Because there's another generation that's coming after us that we're going to have to pass the baton to. And they're going to have to see a godly people. They're going to have to see the people of the way. Not the people of the world, but the people of the way. The people of the way, they resemble God. The people of the way, they work for God. The people of the way, they serve God. The people of the way is a conduit between the new saints and God. Listen, listen, take, take your seat. I, did, I, didn't, I promise I didn't mean, I didn't mean all, I didn't mean to do all that. I, I didn't mean to do all that, but I'm not going to take it back. You know, I was, I was meditating during my time with God. And see, God wants us to sanctify everywhere we go. I don't care where it is, God wants us to sanctify it. You see, God don't want this house to lose our, our anointing of praise and worship. You see, because everything that we possess, it came by way of praise and worship. And, you know, because sometimes people get lost. They get lost in stuff. They get lost in who they want to be, their reputation. They get lost in who people think they are. And so when they get lost, they no longer need to praise God. They feel like, hey, what I have, I got it by myself. What I possess is because of what I did. It's because of my wisdom. It's because of the job that I have. They begin to sound like that, that, that other person who used I. And you see, anytime you get an I attitude, you're not going to be in the world too long with an I attitude. But it's something about when you trust in God. God will give you longevity when the doctor said you should be dead. Uh, God will listen. He will extend your life when everybody else thinks that you're going to take an exit. When you begin to magnify God. God. Give, give, me, give me about five minutes, I promise. It. I think I said five minutes about ten minutes ago, didn't I? But give, can I have another five? How many people give me another five minutes? Oh, five, ten, fifteen, twenty. Amen. So y'all want to be here till we get ready to go to the 11 o'clock service, right? But let me slow up just a little bit, and I promise, give me about five minutes, because I do want to get you out for breakfast. And amen, I know some of you thinking that communion is breakfast, but it's not. I promise communion is not breakfast. Amen, it's not even a snack. I mean, I, pr I tell you, it's not even a snack. Communion, listen, stay in the spirit when you take communion. Because you'll get upset if you think it's a snack. Because it's, it's just a wafer, it's just a wafer. Amen. You know, I just, I, I, I thank God for everything that he's doing for us. You know, I heard the songwriter say, but the blood will never lose its power. It reaches to the highest mountain, and it flows to the lowest valley. The blood that gives me strength from day to day, it shall never lose 
It's power. I don't know about you. I'm here because of the blood. How many are here because of the blood? I'm here because of the blood. And as, a, as I begin to think about this message, I said there's another generation that we have to pour into because they don't know about the blood. Some didn't even come the way that we came. I'm not saying they have, they have to, but there's something that they are missing that caused them to stumble and fall and struggle in a way that we did not have to struggle because we was anchored in something that we need to make sure that this next generation is anchored in. That's why as, as, as uh, mature spiritual believers, we cannot keep stumbling and falling before uh, this next generation. They have to see someone standing. They have to see somebody holding on the bloodstained banner. They have to see somebody enduring. They have to see an adult people not always on the altar crying about foolishness. Not always making mistakes. They have to see somebody who will stand at the altar between them and God and tell them you can make it. You know, you know, I like uh, because we have leaders, the eldership, we, we take the, the phone and you can call us if you need us. But you know, I was sharing with one of the elders, I said, you know, uh, wouldn't it be wonderful if the mature saints just pray for themselves? I know I was going to make somebody upset then. Because if, when somebody called me, I expect them to be the babes in the church. I expect them to be the ones who just joined the church. I don't, I don't expect old folk to be calling that phone saying, listen, can you pray for me? Because listen, how many know that everybody you call is going through something? Oh, let me move on very quick because I don't want nobody, nobody waiting on me outside. So let, let me move on real quick. Uh, in Revelations chapter 1, don't go there. I'm just going to quote it. The Bible says in the New Living Trans Translation, it starts up by saying that God gave Jesus Christ a revelation to give to his servant, John. He said, the reason I told Jesus to give this revelation to John, he says, because I know John, he will, he will tell what he saw. Now, to you, I don't know, but that's a great testimony concerning John that he would give him a revelation because he would tell what he saw. Now, that, the fact that he said he would give it to John meant that not everyone God could trust with sharing the revelation that he gives them. Because, see, God can't trust people to give the, revel to give the testimony that he gave them. And if God can't trust you to give a testimony that he gave you, he's not going to trust you with revelation. I don't care how much you pray and how much you study. If you can't testify, God is not going to give you a revelation. Y'all pray for me, please. And you know, it, and it hit me, we got to learn to tell what God has done like God did it. We can't water down what God has done in our lives because people are not impacted unless we give them the real story. The real story is not the pretty story. The real, the real sto story is the one that you don't want put on CNN. That's the real story. The, the real story is the, is the one that you didn't put on Facebook. You only put a clip, a trailer of the real story. But he said, tell John. Because he will tell what he saw. You see, he's the God that always was. He's the God that is and the God that will always be. He is the Alpha and the Omega. He is the beginning and he's the end. He knows all things seen and unseen. He called us to be saints, people of the way. That means that we are responsible for following him. We don't have enough people now that take the responsibility for what God has given them responsibility to do. A lot of times people in the body of Christ now want to pass on their responsibility. Listen, I'm going to get there. I got two minutes left. A lot of times people pass on responsibility for what God has given them responsibility over. A lot of people come to the altar because, listen, they don't want to be responsible. 
Uh, you don't believe me? I'm, I'm going to quote some scripture. I'm, I'm, I'm going to stay right here. I'm going to look down every now and then, but I'm going to quote some scripture so you'll know what I'm talking about. The Bible says in Romans 12, he says, listen, present your bodies as, li as living sacrifices unto God. He says, holy. He says, one translation says, for which is your reasonable service. The New Living Translation says, for it is your spiritual worship. Worship starts at you present your body as a living sacrifice. Worship don't even start when you get to the sanctuary. Sanctuary Worship starts with how you live. In other words, if you, you presented your body as a living sacrifice, there's some things that you're not going to do. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I don't care have nobody there to watch you if you presented your body as a living sacrifice there's some things that you're not going to do there's some places that you're not going to go there's some things that you're not going to say if you presented your body as a living sacrifice the problem the problem the problem the problem is is that not a lot of people want to take responsibility for what God told them to do he says you 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 present your bodies as a living sacrifice. He didn't say let the pastor make you present your body. He didn't say let the elder make you present your body. He didn't say let the evangelist make you present your body. But he says you take responsibility for yourself. You take responsibility for every member, every faculty of your body to do the right thing. That means you got to sacrifice. When the enemy starts to talk to you, you say no devil, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to say it. I'm not going to go there. I'm not going to be used by you today because I presented myself as a living sacrifice unto God holy. Listen, nobody told you this was going to be an easy way. When the enemy start talking, you got to start talking too. Everybody living in an earth suit. Everybody got to go by this way. So you, if we came this way, you got to come this way. Take responsibility for yourself. If you want to see a gospel explosion, a Holy Ghost explosion in the church, the saints got to start, I'm going to, the church people got to start taking responsibility for themselves. Because you can't show up and think you can shout this out because it ain't going to work. You can't show up and think you're going to dance this out because it's not going to work. You got to work this out between you and God. The Bible says that you got to work out your own soul salvation. That means there's some work that you got to do on your own. And if it's a sacrifice, a living sacrifice, that means daily you got to pick up your cross and you got to walk. I heard you stop all that yelling. I'm going to come down. I'm going to come down. I'm going to come down. See, I want to start by saying that it is good to thank God. To do so at all times. We learn this in both the Old Testament and New Testament that we got to learn how to thank God. I'm about to close because I'm going to finish this on Tuesday night. But a lot of people have stopped thanking God. Yeah. I'll say it again. A lot of people have stopped giving God thanks. Because a lot of people say, I don't have nothing to be thankful for. They don't even look for nothing to be thankful for. Things happen every day for us to be thankful things happened yesterday for you to be thankful. There were some things that happened this morning for you to be thankful. Uh, but they've stopped being thankful. You know, I, I, was, I, I pulled out, and I don't know if anybody ever did this, but I pulled out in front, in front of a vehicle the other day, a, a big vehicle, an 18-wheeler, probably about 50 to 100 feet. Didn't have time to put on brakes, so I had to punch it. But that was the difference between life and death. I said, I got a reason to be thankful. It didn't take much for me to start thinking 
because I was thankful that 100 feet was a difference between life and death because he didn't have time to put on brakes. He didn't have time. I didn't have time. Before I know it, I was in front of this truck. God, thank you. I thank God because, listen, I'm not here because of my own volition. I'm here because God allowed me to be here this morning. And that's why I said you got to learn to celebrate your brothers and sisters and learn to thank God for them every time you see them. Because even though you might not understand it right now, we're connected together as one body and every member has an importance to the body. And I guarantee you, if someone would leave today you would miss him you got to learn to give God praise and magnify God every time you come to church because you don't know what's going to happen tomorrow you don't know what's going to happen to next the next hour and God wants you to learn how to give him praise we got here by giving God praise we got here by giving God worship we didn't hold anything back and because we gave God worship because we gave God praise because we we picked him up and put him down. Somebody stayed in the right mind. Somebody didn't kill themselves. Marriages stayed together. Homes stayed together because we learned how to praise God. People turned away from their wicked ways because we praised God. Husband got saved. Wives got saved. Children got saved because we kept praising God. In spite of what was going on around us, we praised God. And no matter what's going on in your life, don't allow the enemy to measure you while you're at your weakest point. But you got to learn to give God praise anyhow. I don't care what it looked like. I don't care what you feel, you feel like. But you need to give God some praise. Because your praise is close to your promise. If you learn to give God praise, listen, your promise is coming towards you. You're never going to reach your promise. You're never going to receive your promise unless you learn to give God praise. You can no longer be cute. You've been cute long enough. You got to learn to praise God right where you stand. You got to learn to glorify God. You got to learn to pick him up and put him down. And I guarantee you, God gonna turn. He's gonna turn some things around on your behalf. Tell your neighbor, say neighbor, excuse me, I'm about to give God a praise. Listen, take the next 30 seconds and magnify God in this place. I don't care where you are. You got on the space to glorify him. You got on the space to praise him. You got on the space to exalt him. Tell the Lord thank you. Tell the Lord, thank you in this place. Hello. Oh, Tell the Lord, thank you in this place. Tell the Lord, thank you. I tell you, the Lord, wonderful in this place. He's wonderful. He's wonderful. He's wonderful. He's wonderful. Hayada bako shadada. You know, we don't even hear people speaking in tongues anymore. We don't hear people speaking in tongues anymore. And I know that the church have not lost their power, but people have lost their power. We don't hear people speaking in tongues. We don't see people shouting like they used to be. We see people standing around judging what's taking place. But God is saying, if you would stop being a judge and jump in, God says, I'm going to make you whole. I'm going to heal you. I'm going to deliver you. I'm going to set you free. If you jump in and you begin to magnify God, you begin to praise God, Yeah, 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 yeah. Ah. 
Shidabasa. Listen, 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 listen. Ah, Shidabasa. Listen, listen. We got to transition. 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 transition. Would it be okay if we were about five minutes late? I hear God saying that we need to lay hands on everybody in this place. God wants to mature us in a way where this next phase, this next chapter is not only easy for ministry, but it's easy for you. I'll say it again. This, not only is this next chapter easy for ministry, but it's easy for you. So we want to pray for you real, real quick. It's not going to take long. We're going to let, just like we do offering. Elder Harris over here, Menace, Elder Danielle over here. And we're going to lead them out from the back. And when you show up, When you show up, God is going to do something supernatural in your life. Amen. As they come, just begin to lay hands on them. God's going to do something supernatural in their lives. You got to come prepared to receive. You got to come prepared to receive. Praise God like you receive what you came for. God is going to do something supernatural in your life. Just don't walk by, receive what God is doing. Just don't walk by. You got to praise God for what he's doing. Praise God for how he's delivering. Praise God for how he's healing. Uh, receive the anointing of God in your life. You're going to get a breakthrough from this. Open your mouth. Open your mouth. This is not a lunch line, but this is a Holy Ghost field lounge. Ha Receive it. Act like you got it. Act like you got it. Act like you praise God. Act like you got it. 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 Hallelujah. 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 Now give God a big glory in this place. Hallelujah.